Hi, I'm Gene DeClerc. This is the latest in our series of short videos on issues related to birth. This was entitled, Is there a relationship between pre-pregnancy obesity and cesarean section? Pretty riveting topic for some of us. This is an issue that's been around for a long time. Um, here's a study from the 1940s that talks about the dangers of pre-pregnancy obesity. That's at a time when pre-pregnancy obesity rates are on the order of 4 and 5%, a fraction of what they are now. This is how uh, obesity is, is documented in the United States. It's a combination of weight and, and height. This is indecipherable, um, but I thought I'd put it up to show that I'm an actual professional in these areas. This might be more interpretable. Um, this shows the weight um, associated with different categories of BMI, body mass index. And for example, for a woman who is five foot four, um, if she's between 145, 174 pounds, that's considered overweight. Um, obesity itself is actually in three categories, incredibly entitled one, two, and three, three being the most serious. And in that case, that would be a woman five foot four who was 235 pounds. Now keep in mind, we're talking about pre-pregnancy obesity, not, not a mother's weight while she's pregnant. So what's the trend in obesity in the United States over time? Here's a series of maps that, uh, that are intended to scare you into better eating. Um, and you can take a look at them as they proceed over time. And it shows the growth and the proportion of the population obese uh, to the point where they actually had to change the standards on the map because they had to keep adding more categories as more and more people got into higher uh, weight categories. This stops in 2010 because they actually changed the measure to make it a little bit better, but the trend has not changed very much, although there's been a bit of leveling. Here's the trends in obesity among adult women in the United States uh, over the last 25 years. And there's a couple things that are notable. It went up back in the 80s and, and early 90s. It's been pretty much level now for a number of years, so it, it isn't continuing to increase, though you still hear talk about the obesity epidemic. The question for us is really pre-pregnancy obesity, right? We're not interested in the overall population, but mothers who are about to um, begin their pregnancy. Where are they at that point? And they've begun to measure that more and more in recent years. And this latest slide shows pre-pregnancy obesity in the United States over time. Uh, measurements change a little bit. That's why it says sort of in the title. But what you see again is an increase in the past uh, in the earlier part of the 2000s, but essentially a leveling in recent in recent years. Now, we're gonna, you're going to see the term TSV on a number of the slides coming forward. Um, and that stands for term singleton vertex births. We're looking at cesareans here. And we're looking at mothers who haven't had a cesarean before, primary cesareans, in other words. Um, and we're also limiting it to mothers who have a full gestation, singleton, no twins, don't have a breech birth. In other words, relatively low risk mothers because we're trying to isolate what's the impact of obesity itself, not all these other factors. So, um, I know you're asking, could you put up another indecipherable slide? Here it is, a big table. You don't have to go through this. I'm going to highlight a couple of pieces of it. One, we're talking huge numbers here. Uh, we're talking well over 2 million cases that we talk pregnancies we're talking about in this study. Um, secondly, you see in a box in blue on the right, about 8% of mothers are in obese 2 or obese 3. Now remember, that's over 200 pounds at a height of about 5 foot 4. And then the third piece is circled in red. And what you see is for some subgroups, uh, pre-pregnancy obesity is much higher than in others, in particular non-Hispanic black mothers and American Indian and Alaskan native mothers. Pre-pregnancy obesity is also related to being born in the United States, 23% as opposed to foreign born at 15%, significant differences. Uh, being on private insurance, having only a high school education, 25% of those mothers had pre-pregnancy obesity. Um, versus a uh, mother with a graduate degree, only 12%, about half as likely. It's also related to how many kids you've had. Um, it increases with every birth that you have. This is encouraging news for mothers who want to have a lot of children. It's not predictive of individual mothers, but the trend is that mothers retain a little bit of weight each time. So is it related to the likelihood of a cesarean? Yes. Um, this is the unadjusted data. This is just the rate of cesareans, primary cesareans, again, first time cesareans, uh, to mothers by weight class. And what you see is a consistent increase to the point where 35% uh, of mothers in the uh, obese three category have a primary cesarean, um, about two thirds higher than the national rate. And two and a half times higher 
than mothers in the normal weight category. If you break it down by race ethnicity, what you find is for non-Hispanic black mothers, in each weight class, they have a higher likelihood of a cesarean than a non-Hispanic white mother. Though I think notably, and, and I very subtly circle this, um, the biggest difference is among normal weight mothers. In other words, the likelihood of a cesarean for a non-Hispanic black mother is higher than for non-Hispanic white mothers in the normal weight category by a larger degree than in any other weight category. Again, uh, one doesn't do these and just present raw data. You always adjust. And these are the things we adjusted for in this analysis. Maternal age, race, education, prenatal care, uh, nativity, payment for delivery, a bunch of other things. Uh, to try to get at, was obesity itself the factor? And this is what we found. Uh, after controlling for everything, uh, the numbers you see there are uh, risk ratios. And it bas basically what it says, if you look at the obese three category, it means that a mother in the obese three category having her first birth, that's the red column, is about 2.2 times as likely to have a cesarean than a mother in the normal weight category. For a mother who's already had kids, it's about 2.3 times. So even after controlling for everything, there's still a higher rate of cesareans among mothers with pre-pregnancy obesity. What's the result of this? BMI itself, or pre-pregnancy obesity, remains a significant um, factor in the likelihood of a cesarean section, even after controlling for sociodemographic and medical risk factors. It's a powerful relationship. You can look at it in a number of different ways, and it persists. And this is using um, not national data, but data from 38 states uh, in the United States and millions of cases. Um, the big question then becomes, well, what about outcomes? Does pre-pregnancy obesity lead to poorer outcomes among children? And that's going to be the subject of a future one of these short takes from Birth by the Numbers. If you like this and want to get the slides from this, if you want to look at more of these videos, please go to birthbythenumbers.org. Thank you.